Jensen is pushing GPU prices higher than we have ever seen before, and these increases are well beyond any reasonable inflation numbers. So what is Jensen's master plan for GPU prices in the future? Let's get into it. The high prices of GPUs are something gamers have had to deal with during the last two years of the mining boom, and now that GPU mining is dead, there have been some big discounts on high-end GPUs since Nvidia has announced the RTX 4080 and 4090. However, the deals on new 3090 and 3090 Ti seem to have dried up with only a few offerings at Newegg, and the 3080 and 3080 Ti deals are starting to slowly fade as we get closer to the launch of the 4080 on November 16th. But if you are adventurous, there are some really good deals to be had on the used market. Now the 4090 sold out quickly on day one and has not been readily replenished. Don't be fooled by the seemingly sold out 4090s. As shown by Tim over at Hardware Unboxed, 4090s are readily available in Australia and some stock is seen in Europe, but in the States you only see them as sold out. Even Nvidia took the time to reinforce the high demand of the 4090 when they showed these pictures during the posting for the great unlaunch of 2022. Nvidia wants to manipulate you into believing that gamers are spending the money, so should you. However, the 4090 is not sold out just because of gamers. It is the most powerful desktop GPU that you can buy. It offers a level of performance not seen before on a desktop GPU, and that appeals to professionals. Anyone that does 3D rendering, content creation, developers, and the list goes on and on. The 4090 also appeals to small system builders who sell workstations to those very same professionals. And those people make money using a computer and its higher performance will pay for itself. And that high demand from professionals with limited supply also then draws in the scalpers, making the situation appear even worse. My point is, not everyone purchasing the 4090 are actually gamers. They are professionals that are willing to spend professional money and then write it off on their taxes later. But Nvidia wants you to believe that they are all gamers and that if other gamers are camping out and waiting in line to spend 16 large on a GPU, then maybe they can use FOMO to get you to buy as well. They are trying to trigger the FOMO gene that exists within every one of us. Don't be triggered. Just like you didn't think twice when people purchased a Titan GPU, you shouldn't think twice when people purchase a 4090. Let it go. Now inflation has affected the price of everything. However, we are now in a recession and prices are coming down. Go look at the price of copper and the price of aluminum used in GPU coolers. Go look at how the price of shipping has dropped dramatically since the beginning of this year. Even the price of CPUs and Ryzen 7000 and Intel 13th gen have not had any significant increase. One of the prevailing theories for the high prices of the RTX 4080s and well now what will be a 4080 and 4070 are that they need to push people into buying up all the RTX 3000 stock. Nvidia had to price it so high that they didn't destroy the value of the millions of RTX 3000 GPUs out there. If this is true, then once the RTX 3000 cards are gone, the price of the 4080s should come down and return to normal, or at least the new normal we are seeing with Nvidia GPUs. And if you believe that, then you should spread the word and tell everyone you know to just wait. Wait until a big price drop on RTX 4000 GPUs happens next year. Now, what is this new normal that I mentioned? Well, if we go over to Newegg and look at the lower prices available, not the lowest prices that are the one day sales or the ones with rebate cards, you see an interesting trend. The previous over $1,000 GPUs have been severely cut in price, and most of those like the 3090s are all but gone from stock. But what about the GPUs from the 3080 on down? What you find is that they are still above MSRP. Yes, above MSRP. Is this inflation? We could easily just wave our hands and say it's because of inflation. But is it? We could look at the AMD GPUs. GPUs by either company are made up of very similar components, so AMD would not be immune to inflation. So if we plot the MSRP versus the non-promotional prices at Newegg and... Whoa, that tells a different story. We see that every one of AMD's GPUs are under MSRP. All of them. No exceptions. Every AMD GPU is below MSRP and some by very significant amounts. So it's not just inflation. There is something more going on here where we now see a new normal for NVIDIA GPUs that are higher than the MSRP. 
So the higher prices must be part of Jensen's master plan. What is his master plan? Well, he revealed it recently in a quarterly earnings call back in August. In the last question of that call, he was asked by Ron Seymour, an analyst at Deutsche Bank, that reveals his longer-term plans. Ross asked, Once your gaming business normalizes with the absence of crypto, how do you view the pricing environment? And he also asked about the ASP mix across the stack and will it go down due to the absence of crypto? For those who don't know, the ASP or average selling price skyrocketed during the GPU mining boom. In this chart from 3dcenter.org, we see the average selling price is shown in the middle blue bar. In 2019, before the pandemic and before the mining boom, you can see the quarterly ASP move from $267 to $333 for an average that year of about $300. By 2021, during the mining boom, you see the average selling price is now more than three times higher at just over $1,000. So the question Ron asked about the mix is very valid since they sold a lot higher end GPUs during the mining boom than they ever have. So here's how Jensen answered his question. He said that without the crypto dynamic, the mix would go down. And that is true since the last value in that chart from quarter two of 2022, the ASP has plummeted to almost half at $529. But here's what else he said. However, the overall trend long term the ASP is drifting up. Then he said, game consoles are selling for about $599. Remember that number, $599. The reason is that because it's more useful than ever, and GeForce essentially is a game console inside your PC. That is a remarkable statement. He is equating a GeForce GPU to an entire game console. And then he said, We've always believed that the ASP of GeForce should drift toward the average selling price of a game console. And remember, he said that game consoles are selling for about $599. So that's it. Why are GPUs getting so expensive? Because he always believed it should. It's not because of inflation. It's not because of Moore's Law. It's not because of TSMC charging a ton more money for their wafers. No, it's because he believes it should. And now he's committed to deliver that to his investors. By the way, if you like analysis videos like this, like, share, and consider subscribing as that really helps to support the channel. Now, if you look up the latest Steam hardware survey, you see that of the top 14 GPUs listed, all of them are NVIDIA GPUs. All of them. Two of them are 70 series GPUs, four of them are 50 series, and the other eight are 60 series GPUs. All of those have an MSRP that are lower than that $599 he mentioned. So how does he keep the ASP from dropping back to the $300 level we saw in 2019? He just has to raise prices of the 50 and 60 series of GPUs. He already did that on the 4080 and he will do that on the 12 gigabyte 4080 imposter that will be renamed to a 4070 next year. Now he needs to follow that up with the 4060 and the 4050. I plotted the MSRPs of NVIDIA's GPUs from the 60 series up to the Titan slash 90 series, all the way back to the GTX 700 generation. And you can see an overall trend of slightly rising prices, but not like with ADA. If I focus it down to the under $800 price point, you can see that the 80 Ti and 80 series are now gone as they are above $1,000. So where will the renamed 12 gigabyte 48 imposter be priced? From Jensen's belief, it would have to be above 599. So let's use the same formula Nvidia used to price the 4080. They just priced the 4080 as the same price as last gen's 3080 Ti. So you could see the 4070 be priced as the same as last gen's 3080 MSRP, but maybe that will stretch up to the new normal price of $800. Maybe that would be called the 4070 Ti. After that, they have plenty of room below to price the 4060 at maybe $450 or as high as $500. Of course, they can also slot in a 4060 Ti to bridge the gap. And I didn't plot the 50 series. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. But the 3050, which regularly sells at or above $300 today, could easily drift up to $350 to $400. So there you have it. The prices are going up because that is what Jensen believes. 
Jensen equates a GeForce GPU to an entire game console and his ASP for his GPUs should be the same. And now he has committed to deliver on that belief with higher ASPs to his investors. Let me know in the comments below if you believe a GeForce GPU is essentially a game console inside your PC and should cost at least as much. Next time we'll look at the competition to see if they will derail Jensen's belief system or if they will merely adopt it. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.